tight security and fanfare as the Chinese president arrives in Port Moresby. Revenues affected as a public holiday comes into effect. And digital inclusion takes center stage. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. The Chinese government has announced its plans to continue investing in Papua New Guinea and the Pacific region. Chinese President Xi Jinping, who is in Port Moresby for a state visit ahead of the APEC Leaders' Summit, says China wants to help fellow developing countries. President Xi Jinping arrived in Port Moresby last night with a team of Chinese officials. President Xing Bing arrived in Port Mosby last night. His arrival marking the start of a four-day visit. He was welcomed by Deputy Prime Minister Charles Abel. The fanfare and the celebrations marking the importance that Papua New Guinea was giving to China on this particular visit. At 10.30 this morning, President Xing made a brief visit to the Parliament House, where he met with the PNGDF commander. Since 1975, China has become a key defense partner. In 2017, it gave 62 vehicles to the Papua New Guinea Defense Force. The assistance costing more than 17 million kina. Outside Parliament, the Chinese president said, through a translator, China will continue to invest in fellow developing countries in the Pacific region. China is committed to strengthening trust and cooperation with Papua New Guinea, and together we can go on to build many more roads to prosperity, openness and friendship. Xin Jinping is here for four days. He is the only APEC world leader who is spending close to a week in Papua New Guinea. The Chinese government has assisted PNG to host the APEC Leaders Summit. It has invested in building the government boulevard, resealed the Purapurna Freeway and the reconstruction of the International Convention Center. The Chinese assistance has left many outside of Papua New Guinea question how much Papua New Guinea owes China. Let me thank the President for ending over this uh, boulevard. It's an important boulevard right in front of our historic uh, parliament. It's a, a significant indication of our strong relationship between our two countries. They include visa exemptions for Chinese diplomats and government officials, a loan facility that will be managed through the Department of Treasury, scholarships and additional support for infrastructure. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. The business community from across the 21 APEC economies converged on PNO's Pacific Explorer today for the 2018 APEC CEO Summit. The CEO Summit aims to address the digital divide that can arise on the grounds of age, gender, ethnicity and religion. The CEO Summit is being held under tight security on the cruise liner Pacific Explorer. Business speakers lined up for the summit include Patrick Puyan, Chairman and CEO of Total, Raymond Chow, Asia Pacific Chairman of PwC, and Pierre Eladari, CEO of Puma Energy Global. Under the theme Inclusion in the Age of Disruption, the APEC CEO Summit is the most influential annual gathering of high-level business and government leaders in the Asia Pacific, a region that covers 60% of the global economy. APEC is the premier regional grouping in the Asia-Pacific region. Its members account for more than half of global GDP and well over 60% of global trade. It promotes regional economic integration and acts as an incubator for new trade policy approaches. The free trade area of Asia and Pacific is a great concept born in APEC and nourished in APEC. In his welcoming address, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill reminded leaders to work cooperatively to increase trade and inclusion in our community. Papua New Guinea is being labeled the least developed and arguably the poorest of the APEC economies. It is an economy that relies on international trade. 
Amidst geopolitical tensions, O'Neill stated that PNG and other emerging countries suffer when big countries don't follow rules. The first challenge that we have is that working within the internationally agreed system to address grievances. This includes actions by major economies that has an, a huge impact on the trade flows. As smaller economies, countries like Papua New Guinea, place considerable uh, reliance on the international trade, and especially the international trade rules. We suffer when rules are broken or ignored, and we benefit when rules are followed by all countries, large and small. The CEO Summit is an influential meeting. It makes recommendations which are then adopted by world leaders. World leaders scheduled to address the summit include President of China Xi Jinping, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, and U.S. Vice President Mike Pence. Leanne Girari, National MTV News. This week is the busiest Port Moresby has ever been since the Pacific Games in 2015. In a space of a week, Papua New Guineans went from social media debates about sports cars to the 16 billion kina national budget to the APEC Leaders Summit. Last night, the arrival of the Chinese president marked the start of a four-day visit, a visit that Australia and the U.S. are viewing with a lot of anxiety. Isla. In November every year, the national budget usually takes center stage, but not this year. This week, the budget came two days before the start of the biggest APEC meetings. People were interested in the budget for a day, and then it faded into the background. Then boom. Enter China-US geopolitics. Last night, President Xi Jinping, the most influential world leader in the Asia-Pacific, arrived in Port Moresby with the largest delegation of officials. They came on two large planes. The festivities for the Chinese delegation demonstrated just how important China's money is to the PNG government. China is, uh, is a global leader, has got responsibilities uh, in that respect to make sure that some of the issues uh, and challenges that the, the global community face uh, in, in terms of issues like climate change, uh, change and resource management and, 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 and fishing and illegal, illegal fishing within the Pacific, those are really important issues to small Pacific Island nations. This coming gives us an indication that uh, the people of China are confident uh, of this country. Over the next three days, the world's politics will play out on Papua New Guinea soil. It already is, by the way. From Singapore, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence indicated that he would be revealing just how dangerous the Chinese One Belt, One Road initiative is to Pacific Island states and the rest of the world. This announcement comes on the back of U.S. funding of $60 billion. That's about 200 billion kina, aimed at the Asia-Pacific region. Also note that China has allocated the same amount to African countries for various projects, including infrastructure. Australia has announced its own funding initiatives for the Pacific, the equivalent of 7 billion kina. These APEC meetings, we want to demonstrate our ongoing strong support for further regional economic integration. Our focus here today, some of which uh, you will have heard in Minister Birmingham's intervention this morning, uh, is about implementing practical capacity building initiatives, for example, across structural reform, trade facilitation, digital trade, uh, and women's economic empowerment. Well, it's PNG's po foreign policy that we are uh, friends of all, enemies of none, and we welcome all the uh, partnerships. Uh, we, we foster all the partnerships that we can find. In the foreign minister's meeting, the U.S.-China tension is already being felt as the U.S. and China tussle over free trade and other issues. On the ground in Port Moresby, a strong presence from the U.S. and Australian military. From China, a strong trade presence and a message of building relationships on the ground. From the outset, China appears to have all its moves planned out and is ticking off each of them on its list of things to do. And it's about resources and territorial influence. And so it's a very strategically timed state visit. The fact that we see the China flag everywhere around town, I think that's really uh, sends strong signals to not, not just the Pacific, but also all of the delegates here that, that China is really um, on the front foot 
and the fact that Mike Pence is uh, the, the vice president is only flying in and flying out is not staying in PNG that sends the wrong signal. The fact that Trump isn't even here that 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 just plays into the anxiety that people in Australia in the Pacific elsewhere have that the US is retreating from this part of the world. At least for the government the attention from world leaders is important. Maybe APAC is an opportunity, maybe it's a double-edged sword with opportunity on the one side and debt on the other. What stands out is China's willingness to engage. President Xi Jinping is here for four days. President Trump is absent. President Putin is absent. Both sent their number twos. Scott Waide, National MTV News. Foreign Affairs Minister Rembeng Pato says better internet connectivity and participation in ICT by Papua New Guineans was part of crucial discussions at the APEC Minister's Ministerial Meet yesterday. PNG is anticipating the Exim Bank of China will finance the construction of the 600 million Kina domestic submarine cable projects. With that in progress, another 300 million Kina undersea cable linking PNG and Australia is expected to be up and running by the end of 2019. These two cables will help in addressing the demand for bandwidth. Papua New Guinea's internet rates are among the highest in the world and the connectivity is really poor, especially outside of major towns and cities. Ringbing Pato didn't go into any detail about the dialogue at the media conference but mentioned the disadvantaged Papua New Guineans that needed to be in tune with information communication technology. Having the APEC team harnessing inclusive opportunities, embracing the digital future, PNG hopes to have a successful dialogue with other Pacific Islands and members of the 21 APEC economies to find solutions in improving connectivity and the cost of the internet. He did, however, make a statement that China was a major partner in PNG's development, alluding to the fact that China will be providing the 600 million Kina PNG Kumul domestic undersea cables. Uh, and computer... Uh, becomes available to uh, rural uh, communities, uh, particularly in the APEC uh, economies, for boys and girls, uh, women, and as well as the uh, as well as the disabled. We welcome China's um, uh, participation and investment in our in infrastructure uh, development to the extent to which uh, it will uh, contribute to connectivity. Is something that our officials are working through. Charles Abel the Deputy Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, when handing down the 2019 national budget on Tuesday, was ecstatic about the new submarine cables that will help address some of PNG's internet woes, going to the point of suggesting a better deal for internet for Papua New Guineans in the future. Some of the investments that are going on in the telecommunication sector are very important to deliver that submarine cable into, into Sydney by the end of 2019 make sure that it is administered through a very good policy framework so that the benefits are passed on uh, to our people. Very important to get that national broadband network in place. I've said in, in Cabinet that we should be thinking as the world is going about a situation where one day in the future the internet will be basically free. As you go around the world there's more and more locations where internet is free and it would be so wonderful if we can uh, we get to that point. Obviously with the uh, the state of geography and so on in Papua New Guinea, you know, it's, it's going to take some time to get there. Fidelis Sukina, National MTV News. You're with National MTV News. We'll be back with more after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Issues affecting Pacific Island states were expected to be brought to the table when leaders of the PIF met with Chinese President Xi Jinping this afternoon. The leader of the world's fastest growing economy is in the country on an official state visit prior to the start of the APEC leaders meeting. The Chinese president has wasted no time in getting down to business on his official state visit to the country. Apart from launching new projects built through China aid and bilateral talks with Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, President Xi Jinping also met with leaders of the Pacific Island states. The leaders of the PIF were invited by PNG as guests of the APEC Leaders Summit and they had an audience with China's president this afternoon. PNG's Prime Minister says this is an opportunity for the Pacific to put forward its agenda to China. 
China is, uh, is a global leader, has got responsibilities uh, in that respect to make sure that some of the issues uh, and challenges that the, the global community face uh, in, in terms of issues like climate change, uh, change and resource management and, 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 and fishing and illegal, illegal fishing within the Pacific, those are really important issues to small Pacific Island nations. And also this year has been declared by China as the year of tourism and uh, they're trying to get uh, in a growing middle class of uh, Chinese middle class out of uh, China to visit other parts of the world and Pacific will be the strong destination that will be encouraged by the Chinese government uh, for their citizens to visit. So those are sort of the issues that we will be discussing during our, our meeting. This afternoon, the Pacific leaders met with President Xi. However, media houses from Papua New Guinea, as well as international media, were not allowed to film any of the proceedings. This despite local media receiving accreditation to cover the dialogue between China and the Pacific. In the end, the media was forced to vacate the lobby of the hotel where the talks took place. Details of the bilateral discussions were not available at the time of this broadcast. Mary Batulo, National MTV News. Developers of the Papua LNG project this morning signed an MOU to begin negotiations for a gas agreement. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Total Chairman and CEO Patrick Puyani, who addressed the occasion, reaffirmed their commitment to the country's next big LNG project. The proposed Papua LNG project has been touted as the next big LNG development for Papua New Guinea. This morning, lead project developer Total, together with joint venture partners ExxonMobil and Oil Search, signed an MOU with the state to begin negotiations for a gas agreement. According to Total Chairman and CEO Patrick Puyani, the partnership between all stakeholders in this project will be key to its success. What we need to put together with this type of uh, project needs a lot of mutual support, you know, solidarity. You don't manage it individually. It will not be total alone. It's impossible to be total with all the experience of Exxon and all search in the country and primarily with your government. So I'm happy to have you. We have your support. You demonstrated that to us. We also need the support of the poor governors, of course, because we know that it's uh, on the land that things are, have to be done, in particular in your country, where you have a, a rich culture of land owners, land management and attachment to the land. For Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, the MOU signals the real beginning of development for Papua LNG. He says the state aims to have negotiations completed by quarter one, 2019, to enable this project to progress. Uh, this is the beginning of the development of our second LNG in our country. Uh, today's memorandum of understanding uh, paves the way for us to enter into a project uh, guest agreement. Uh, which uh, will be negotiated between the parties uh, over the next three or four months and to be concluded by the 31st of March 2019. Whilst there is still more to be completed, the Prime Minister is confident the lessons learned from the country's first gas project, PNG LNG, will be used as a guide for negotiations for Papua LNG. Oh, it's, uh, in fact, the uh, basic terms have been agreed to, uh, but the technical and the, the financial details need to be. In fact, uh, uh, when the details come out, uh, you will see that Papua New Guinea will greatly benefit from this, unlike the first LNG. So uh, we are very, uh, very thankful for the understanding that we have reached with Total. Total has been a very good partner in this, in this and we are thankful to uh, all the other stakeholders, especially the uh, uh, landowner representatives and the provincial government. Uh, but this is the first step towards a, uh, towards a long road. So uh, uh, let's, let's iron out the, uh, uh, the finer details and uh, before we go out and tell the nation that this is the total benefit that we are bringing for the nation as a result of this project. Batulo, National MTV News. One of Papua New Guinea's senior citizens, Sir John Caputin, has launched his book titled Our APEC Journey in the wake of the APEC Economic Leaders Week in Port Moresby. Sir John Caputin was among three other authors, Dr. Eric Kwa, Francis Awesa and Professor Jenek Radin, who also launched their books at the occasion. Governor-General Sir Bob Dadai officiated the ceremony. 
At the launching of the four books, Governor General of Papua New Guinea Sir Bob Dadaya presented the authors Sir John Caputin, Francis Owesa, Dr. Eric Kwa, and Professor Jernick Reden a copy of their own book to mark the occasion. The Governor General said PNG has a very rich history and it has not been written or put into record over time for future generations and encourages the young generation to take up writing. Sir John Caputin's book. Our APEC journey outlined how PNG first became the member of APEC in 1993 under the leadership of then Prime Minister Pius Winty. The book has taken Sir John Caputin over nine months to complete and reflects the journey that PNG took since becoming an active part of the APEC group. After the Prime Minister had inaugurated the Look North policy to look beyond the traditional partners whom I must say regretfully, Your Excellency, did not want us to be a member of APEC. Former Prime Minister Pius Winty acknowledged Sir John's work and gave his remarks on the part PNG took to align itself as a strategic partner with big players in the Asia Pacific region, such as China, Australia, and the USA. From the global perspective, and that's a country with 1.2 billion people. And I formed my mind that that country will have a big influence in the world, and I was not wrong. Meanwhile, renowned law practitioner, researcher and writer Dr. Eric Kwa presented his 11th edition, The Constitution of Papua New Guinea, to his already existing 10 books in which he researched and published widely, both locally and internationally. Because people ask us, how we see that you have got 700 different languages, many tribes, how we see that you are able to remain together united as one nation. Being a regular visitor to PNG and adjunct professor at the School of Public and International Affairs, Columbia University, USA, Jernick Braden is the author of the book, Walk Tall. You must believe in yourself. Francis Owes' book is simply an autobiography of himself, one any Papua New Guinean baby boomers from his generation can relate to. A first-time author, the book attempts to capture the imaginations of readers with the catchphrase, from lap lap to laptop. Shane Saroya, National MTV News. Fishermen who sell at the Koki Fish Market have seen a temporary decline in business due to APEC restrictions to night fishing. Fisherman Quentin Ofai says many of them fish at night and they have been greatly affected since the restriction took effect. When MTV visited a cocky fish market this morning, it was almost empty. It has been like this since Monday. On a normal day, the market would be congested with a wide variety of fresh seafood. But today, it was just fish and shells, most of which were caught the previous morning. Fishermen were restricted by APEC security authorities not to fish at night because they were using lights that could raise security alerts. Just seeing uh, APEC, I think it has affected uh, Fisherman Island people. Uh, like today, you can see there's no one here at the market, only two people are marketing. The reason is maybe they really do not understand uh, what APEC is all about. Before the APEC week commenced, members of the police and defense force visited the market to raise awareness on the restricted zones. Market manager Jilong Auma said there was no plan to close the market. However, most of the sellers were intimidated by the awareness message. He added that they were not alerted on how APEC could boost their business. Therefore, most have now made a loss. I want to went around and telling them that um, they were given 100 meters away from their normal catching area. Yeah, so, um, like, vendors, I mean, the shimmers, they use sport lights and all this stuff, and they don't want to you know, flash it around and attract our um, security guards here on the coastal side. And there'll be a bit of, you know, danger too, so they stop. They stop um, yeah, bringing them closer to where they normally catch up. The Koki fish market cost 10 million kina to build. It was opened in 2017 by NCD Governor Powers Pakop. The market benefits people along the Motuen coastline, some of which include Fisherman Island and Hanoabara. Market is a bit empty today because they, uh, the villagers had their own meeting in the village, Fisherman Island itself. Uh, they were going to go off for three days. 
three days and three nights, so there'll be no catches coming from. But uh, normally we don't. Our market is not like this. We always full. For most local fishermen, selling the catch makes ends meet on a daily basis. These few weeks have greatly affected their business. However, most have opted to enjoy the comforts of their homes away from the busy city. Charlene Airy, National MTV News. Public transport such as cabs and bus routes have been affected since this week due to the APEC CEO summit. Operators have raised concerns that their services have been affected and are not making enough revenue. Today in Port Moresby, there were only a few buses and cabs driving around the city in search of customers. The public holiday didn't do bus and cab owners a favor. In light of the APEC meetings in Port Moresby, Various routes were blocked to public transport. Unregistered buses and cabs were locked away by traffic officers. Only the few registered PMVs faced another issue, and that is there were no customers. Uh, Bus Falls normal route is from Gordons to Four Mile, Badali, Connie, Ella Beach, downtown, Hanwabara and back to Gordons. Traffic officers have now changed that route from going down Ella Beach and downtown to Lost Road and Connie Double Way. Bus drivers said on a regular day they make between 300 kina and 500 kina a day, but the disruption caused by APAC has affected their daily takings. The same concern was raised by cab drivers. Ela beach na osimlo wata France ano baklo simso. Em ta sol la mibla ba I think mibla ba mibla ba lost lost o mibla ba na mega mibla ba na. Michelle Steven, National MTV News. International delegates who are here for the APEC summit caught a glimpse of what can be described as eye-catching cultural showcase hosted by PNG Tourism Promotion Authority in partnership with APEC PNG Authority. It was held at the National Football Stadium in Port Moresby. The mini cultural event captured most of the traditional cultural displays from the 22 provinces in PNG. Other entertainment included live band performances from local artists. The event aimed to give international delegates a feel of what Papua New Guinea has to offer in terms of its culture. This is a colorful event apart from the APEC leaders' spouses' visitations that will happen over the weekend. And you're with National MTV News. Stay tuned for more local stories coming up after the break. Welcome back to the news. The Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte arrived in Port Moresby at 6 a.m. this morning. He is the second APEC leader to arrive for the Leaders' Summit. President Duterte is also here to finalize various bilateral agreements. And this afternoon, the Philippine Agricultural Secretary visited a rice project outside of Port Moresby where he signed an agreement for the supply of rice with Agriculture Minister Benny Allen. Fortunately, the President for Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, and the Prime Minister, Peter O'Neill, were unable to attend the MOA signing. Instead, the Cabinet Ministers and Members of Parliament attended the signing, along with their counterparts from the Philippines. There are 35,000 plus Filipinos based in PNG, and there is a gradually growing PNG population in the Philippines, with both countries' bilateral agreements on fisheries in PNG waters and rice exports from the Philippines. The Memorandum of Agreement for a Rice Project at 14 Mile was signed today. Food security is important for any country, and Papua New Guinea is also concerned about uh, food security for its people, and therefore we are now taking serious in growing rice in Papua New Guinea. And we lack resource, we lack technology, and we need our friends, our development partners to assist us to grow, grow, grow rice and to invest in the economic sector. The details of the agreement include PNGs allowing Filipino farmers to farm in Port Moresby to cultivate the rice. The Philippines have had a problem with rice productions. As reports from the Philippines say, Filipino farmers end up using 22% of household expenditures, leading to the increase in prices for rice. 
For the Philippines, it's a win-win situation. Surplus rice exported to them and their farmers have an income. But what are the benefits for PNG? So we are inviting investors from Philippines and elsewhere in, in the world to come and invest in Papua New Guinea in growing rice. We are ready to work with you. The demo farm here at 14 Mile is what is expected to be on a larger scale of 30,000 hectares rice farm if both countries finalize the rice agreements. And so if the dream of the people of Papua New Guinea is to feed your people, we only need to develop about 100,000 hectares and we will be able to feed you. The MOA signing signifies a new era for PNG and Philippines in rice production. It allows investors from the Philippines to invest in Papua New Guinea to farm and grow rice. Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. The Lay Police have issued a warrant of execution this afternoon to Lay City planner Celestine Ramang following an eviction order that was issued to him by Myrobe's hire car, who claims to be the new owner of the state property. The property belongs to Lay City Authority, which was Lay City Council then. According to Mr. Ramang, the previous council sold the house to Myrobe's hire car almost three years ago. Mr. Rummings and his family were told by the police to vacate the premises by tomorrow. Rummings said they were told to sleep in Lace Council chambers until they find a new place. This property, including this three-bedroom house, belongs to Lay City Council then, which is now Lay City Authority. It is located at Oleander Street in Eriku. The house was occupied by Lace City planner Celestine Ramming and his family since 2010 until this afternoon when the police issued a warrant of execution to Ramming and his family to vacate the property by tomorrow morning. The warrant follows an eviction order that was served to Mr. Ramming by Myrobe's hire car company on Monday this week. So time ago found out that, uh, yes, the house was sold. And what surprises me was that uh, the title I tell you, I'm <laughs> taking long blood time long, long blood time long, but I execute him, I transfer long one plan, man, so, but it took them very, very less time than me to, hey, yeah. me work the less long blood time now, I just, me follow how the title was transferred within a very short time. So anyway, that that happened, the title actually has been transferred for some to again. But from, from, uh, from Lay City Authority, or Lay City Council, he go along uh, my robes. So he currently holds a title. I said, no, no. Uh, I objected to that. So now me bring all attention to the uh, provincial uh, government, on the provincial administration, uh, legal office, uh, look, look behind him. Because the uh, council, our lawyers are actually part of the group that uh, did the sales and like So me pay him hard to work long. So we go to the provincial administration. Uh, this is the state property and was under the care of Lay City Council. Its purpose is to accommodate the offices of the city council. According to the city planner, the real value of the property cost two to three million kina. Almost three years ago, it was sold for almost 1.5 million kina by Lay City Council then to Myrobe's hire car company based in Lay. According to Mr. Ramang, this is one of the many properties of Lay City Council that was sold to the public by the previous council. So the court go for about one and a half years. And then uh, lately, last week, um, court is given this, you know, same, let's, let's, by uh, case, because uh, uh, the, the court now recognized that uh, the sale, the sale was illegal on the fact that uh, the uh, Financial Management Act, the provisions all, you know, behind him. So, send uh, but uh, my ropes, I'm going to tell you, give me the same, he already, Purchased the property and the title has been transferred to him. So that was that, that was the problem. So judge it seems like uh, talk or send the title, only holding title now, but the process is only not behind him. So I said, I'm talking about it. It seems like case and you file in a new case. Uh, that is the time I'm thinking, I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, I need a fraud or something. For now, Mr. Ramang and his family will be living in Lace Council Chamber in town until they find a new place. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. 
With the world's attention on Papua New Guinea, the PNG Tourism Promotion Authority has officially launched their New Look website. The website gives new meaning to tourism as it is more interactive and user-friendly. In launching the website, Tourism Minister Emil Tamur also thanked the national government for allocating 67 million kina for tourism sector developments. Following a review of its existing website, PNG Tourism Promotion Authority undertook an exercise to redevelop its website. With this new and improved website, PNG Tourism Promotion Authority seeks to change the perception of what one thinks of PNG to reimagine the true natural beauty of the country. It is not only a website, but also an online marketing tool. Valuable information not only for our international visitors, but it can also be used as an educational tool for our schools and learning institutions for training, awareness and general tourism information. It took about six to seven months to redevelop the online site with a more user-friendly interface with its users. Most of the contents on the web page are based on PNGTPA's Google Analytics report. Visitors that come to our website, they want to go to events. So that's why we pulled up all the events and uh, plugged them into the front page, top of the, uh, top of the page. Although there are challenges present in regards to compliance and data protection, the new online site helps to positively promote the country's image. So we must, for once, be proud of our country. If there is any way you and I need to contribute, in a positive way to give greater exposure to this country than it is now. Lilian Soperakinea, National, MTV News. Contracts were signed yesterday by the Department of Works and Contractors for Infrastructure Rehabilitation throughout the country. In total, contracts for over 100 million kina were awarded today. These are for bridge rehabilitation and construction as well as the rehabilitation of Groka Market. Kovac Limited has been awarded the contracts to build three bridges along Sipik Highway in East Sipik Province and six bridges in Ramu Medang Province. China Wu Yi will be constructing the Groka Market with Lyco Architects Limited managing the project. A Papua New Guinean entrepreneur who developed a power buying web application has already drawn interest from more than 20,000 subscribers in the country. Former Post Korea journalist Jive Smare taught himself how to build websites and later built the application that takes away the burden of standing in line to buy electricity. And turning overseas to California, where the death toll from two massive wildfires sets new records by the day. The infernos have now killed at least 58 people and left behind a path of destruction where more than 96,000 hectares. President Trump will travel to the state on Saturday to see the devastation firsthand. And the urgent search for 300 people still missing is daunting. Tonight, hundreds of searchers and more than 20 dogs digging through what's left of Paradise, California. And there isn't much. They're looking for human remains amidst heaps of twisted metal and piles of ash. Officials say many of the now 56 bodies recovered so far have been burned beyond recognition. So burned, it's difficult to tell if they're even human. We're trying to determine the difference between uh, human remains and non-human remains. Uh, because it can be extremely difficult in these fires to make that differentiation for those of us that are untrained. The sheriff's office is keeping a list of those unaccounted for. It has more than 300 names on it. They're hoping to find them alive, but expect the death toll to rise. Now, some are already assigning blame. 22 residents who lost their homes in the fire are suing the local power company, Pacific Gas and Electric, saying the company was aware of problems with sparks from their transmission lines in the area of origin of the campfire. Cal Fire has not determined the cause of the campfire, and it could be months before it's known. Earlier this year, Cal Fire determined that PG&E was responsible for 12 wildfires across six counties in California. For Butte County, some positive news. Through our ongoing efforts, uh, we have been able to locate 
uh, or determine that over 200 people that we thought were missing or weren't accounted for are not. But a week after the mass exodus of more than 20,000 people from paradise, there are only so many places to go. Some shelters are full. For others, they just don't want to go there. Jennifer Fitzgerald and her seven-year-old daughter lost their home in the fire. Jennifer's job doing home care is gone, too. The pair spent the night sleeping inside of a friend's car in a Walmart parking lot. She's not the only one suddenly calling this refugee camp home. That could be worse. It could be sleeping under out here where it's way freezing with nothing like a lot of people have been. That's exactly what Laura Whitaker is doing, sleeping outside in a tent with her grandson, Eli. Very cold. It's been like 30 degrees at night. Sleep. Yeah. Didn't sleep. Not last night. It was so cold, and I just kept myself completely wrapped around him. Nine-year-old Eli is putting on a brave face. He'll be homeless until his parents can save enough money to buy a trailer. It's hard. Yeah, I bet. You're only nine years old. Mm-hmm. What do you miss most? Just being in a bed. <laughs> you just miss your bed. It's warm. Being under a ceiling and actually having a real bathroom. It's just hard. And stay tuned for some sporting updates in Chukai Sports coming up next. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. SB Hunters duo Radley Brower and Edene Gabi have signed with Queensland Interest Super Cup team winner Manly Seagulls for the 2019 season. Brawa and Gabi were instrumental in this year's season with the SP Hunters being named as the Players Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year respectively at the SP Hunters Awards Nights. Bradley Brower and Adeni Gabi were involved in the Kumuls international matches last month. Brower has been regarded as a workhorse on the field. He plays with a lot of toughness and determination. He was one of the team's top performer with a total of 710 tackles this season. The lock forward has been regarded as a strong leader on and off the field. Adeni Gabi was exciting to watch this year in his maiden season with the SP Hunters. The fullback slash winger is electric with the ball in hand, scoring 10 tries and averaging 126 run meters per game. Both players will join Wynnum Manly for the 2019 season. Wynnum finished 12th on the ISC ladder. Also leaving the SP Hunters is Willie Minoga, who will be joining the Barrow Raiders in the UK along with Stagroth Amien and Wartovo Poara Jr. The Barrow Raiders compete in the second tier competition in England. The Boas brothers, Arce and Watson, will also be leaving the SP Hunters to join the Featherstone Rovers who also compete in the second tier competition in England. This year is the highest number of players leaving the Hunters to join other clubs. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. Former PNG Pukpuk and Black Orchids player Jimmy Tama Pahia sadly passed away on Tuesday at the Buka General Hospital. He represented the under-20 Papua New Guinea Pukpuks in 2010, participating in the Oceania Championship and was a regular member of the Black Orchids squad. Jimmy, who is a certified search and rescue diver, was asked to retrieve a dead body of a drowned person but unfortunately lost his life in the process. The Black Orchids 7th team, Bougainville Rugby Union and PNG Rugby Football Union have sent their condolences to his immediate family. Jimmy is survived by his two children, Telani, 8 years old, and 6-year-old Charlie. Chukai Sports continues with more after these messages. Stay tuned. <laughs> Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Para Sports coordinator Jackie Travers says their focus will be to identify, train, and prepare para athletes for the 2020 Olympic 
Tokyo Olympics rather. She says there is still a demand for more para athletes and while the opportunity still remains, families are encouraged to bring their loved ones with a disability to high performance sports to be screened and to identify possible sporting capabilities. Currently training for the Arafura and the 2019 Pacific Games are eight para sport athletes that coordinator Jackie Travitt says are training for their respective sport. Uh, at the moment we've got athletes who are in training right now. So we're training them. Our major focus is at the Tokyo 2020 Games, which we're trying to at least get two or three of our athletes to take part at the Tokyo Games. But there's other little competitions into the Tokyo Games, which we have are for our games and the Pacific Games. So they're in full training now, so our athletes. She says while there is one or two new athletes in the train on squad, most of the athletes have represented PNG at a number of events, including the recent Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. We've got um, eight athletes, so we've got different sports for athletics, powerlifting, table tennis. Jackie says not only is high performance sport getting ready for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but also to get the athletes ready for other national and regional tournaments. Few of them have been playing sports for a while, but it's just few that we've identified through our talent programs that are new to the sport. Two events para sports athletes are looking forward to attending are the Arafura and the 2019 Pacific Games in Samoa. She says while there is still a demand for more athletes, families are encouraged to bring in their loved ones with disabilities so high performance sport can do screen tests to identify potential future representatives for para sports. If you know if you have any anyone that you know who has disabilities, I would encourage you to bring them forward, like for us to identify and for them to take part in sports. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. And that ends Chukai Sports, the weather details coming up next. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast in the southern region. Fine weather, although cloudy in Port Mosby and Kerama, also Alusa. Showers in Popondita and mostly fine in Daru. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, Friday, November 16, 2018. As part of MTV's coverage of APEC, the Prime Minister's address to the opening session of the APEC CEO Summit will follow right after this bulletin. Stay tuned for that. But for now, on behalf of the news team and myself, we wish you a pleasant viewing and good night.